In this episode, I was joined by Bieli Kibitok, better known as BK for short, who is the creator of the Eclectic Collections MetaVenture and a freelance Web3 consultant within and for the Upland Metaverse. Far beyond that, however, BK is somebody who has been highly engaged within the Upland community for quite some time, proactively making connections, building communities, and supporting a wide range of community projects. BK has put in countless hours doing so, it's something she appears to be extremely passionate about. And as we discuss in our chat, this is such an important factor in a Web3 metaverse where your reputation in the community is one of the most valuable assets you can ever have. Whether it's supporting OG projects like the Quailwood Neighborhood Development, creating digestible layer two information cards, or offering up personalized one-on-one -on -one consultancy, BK is more than willing and able to offer up her services, opinions, and insights based on her extensive experience and her wide range of community connections. I had a fantastic time chatting with BK this morning, and I hope you enjoy our conversation as much as I did. After all, if like BK, you're willing to put in the time and be a positive and highly proactive community member, then you might also find yourself heavily engaged in the highly rewarding and eclectic adventures in the metaverse and beyond. Warning, the information and opinions within are solely for views of the individuals involved contains content not suitable for anyone. Alrighty, thank you very much for joining us once again for another episode of the Metaverse and Beyond podcast. This week we're featuring, now we were talking about this before we got kicked off, it's BK for short. Um, Bieli Kiwi Talk is the way I read your name. How are we doing this evening, your time? Uh, it's... Uh... It's all right. Thank you very much for having me on. It's a pleasure. No worries. Now, yes, I will say a few things from the get-go. Um, if you were watching the Upland Down Under podcast the other night, um, just after that got done, my laptop just absolutely bricked itself. Uh, it wasn't – I don't believe it's to do with this global uh, – you know, have you seen this big computer drama, yeah. all of these yeah, yeah. massive computers? Absolutely. I couldn't go to the shop this morning because I usually pay with my phone and they had the systems down, so I couldn't. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy, isn't it? They're saying there's a whole bunch of airlines down. Um, yeah. Pretty scary. Um, apparently, they all need some drivers manually taken out of them or something. I don't know. So, yeah, apparently my computer issue wasn't to do with that. Um, it's pr pretty much a brand new laptop, so I'm on one of my son's laptops so i don't know how this is going to go we'll, we'll see how we go but um yes so bk is going to take over some of the share screen responsibilities just to try and take the load off the son's laptop but we'll see how we go now aside from that did you happen to catch the news in the upland discord about the changes to sparklet and all of that have you had a read through that yourself yet yeah yes i did um, yeah, it's very exciting. It's coming. Can't wait. <laughs> what um, what stood out to you the most as far as that goes? Um, I haven't read the white paper changes. I just mm. read the article about it, that it is coming, and it's very positive. I was talking about it uh, with Dirk because there was a, quite a confusion in a community because of the uh, clause they put into the first article saying that it may or may not become a crypto. Um, yeah. But they'll confirm that it definitely will become a crypto, so that was good. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, that's what we had a UCM broadcasters meeting uh, a bit earlier than this time yesterday. Uh, so we got a few details. Now, it was 4 a.m. my time. I scribbled together a few notes, which we can kind of go over. But we'll just have a look at that from the get-go because it is it is probably the biggest thing that's going to happen unless you're all about the um unless you're all about the paris release or something like that but this is definitely one of the the biggest things that's happening anytime soon so we've got here exciting updates on sparklet airdrop chapter two and white paper revisions let me just change that view so we can get a bit of Bit better. So what's this all about? Yeah, we had a bit of a teaser on X about this. Um, Upland says, we're thrilled to share some exciting news about Sparklet. There are two major uplet updates we want to highlight. The launch of Chapter 2 in our airdrop series uh, as we revision to the Spark and revisions to the Sparklet white paper. Okay, so everyone's been expecting airdrop Chapter 2. What's that going to be involved? Um, how, how did you go in Chapter 1? Um, I done pretty well. I had 
0 0.4 or 0 0.6 or something like that. I was quite happy for the yeah, amount of nice. effort I put into it. <laughs> yeah, very good. All right, so they did say that there was changes going to be happening for this next chapter. So what are those changes? Um, all you got to do is visit the airdrop website. I did check that out just before. There's nothing new yeah, there nothing that you can do. So, yeah, still wait and see. Link your Twitter account. We've probably all done that. Complete tweet missions and earn points. That's similar as it was before. We'll anoint, announce the launch on our fish channels. Yep. With Chapter 2, we're making some changes. Okay, this is what we wanted to know. Okay, so the same kind of thing. Reply, repost, like. That's all the same kind of structure. Here we go. Exciting new multiplayer calculation. I haven't read this yet. Uh, your multiplier is now determined by the number of impressions you generate. Each week we'll assess all the quake missions you engage in. Okay, so this is to combat the people that had massive followers, which may or may not have been bots. So this is going to more accurately represent your reach or something like that. Uh, hopefully, that it. because if you go mm. over your own post and you keep opening it, you just get impressions from you opening your own post. <laughs> Do you? Wow. That's interesting. I, right. I don't know well, if they know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's some gamification right there, isn't there? Wow. Um, yeah, gosh, I can see how that could be manipulated with clickers Absolutely. and that sort of stuff too. Mm. All right. Weekly refresh, your multiplayer resets every week, offering a fresh start and a new chance to earn a multi higher multiplayer multiplier based on your efforts. Okay, so that's cool. New notification system for Chapter 2. You will receive email notifications whenever a new post is available. That's good. So don't miss out on anything. But, I mean, if you're engaged, you're going to see all that anyway, aren't you? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, new mission actions. This chapter introduces a variety of mission combinations. Look out for like missions, quote missions, reply missions, repost missions, and even all action missions. Okay, they haven't. Remember in the original iteration of this, they said that uh, they they were perhaps going to highlight different people's content or something like that. Okay. I thought it was going to be a bit more like that. The surprise. New but Yeah. New badges, collect brand new badges in this chapter. Okay, badges, not really. How do you go with badges? Are you a badge collector? No, no. If something no. pops, then I'm happy about it, but otherwise, no. Since they introduced this, that, oh, because you minted in this city, you will get the badge. <laughs> yes, it certainly has devalued those, I suppose you Absolutely. could say, um, for sure. History multipliers, each easily check your weekly multiplier and score on a brand new page, track your progress. Oh, not another leaderboard, is it? Stay tuned on our announcements. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So that seems fairly straightforward. Not doesn't seem like too many changes there except for changing to number of impressions. So okay. I'm pretty happy with that. And the missions. We've been expecting missions for a while, didn't we? Yeah, absolutely. So as for the Sparklet white paper updates, they say we've made several important updates to the Sparklet white paper to better align with our goals and provide clarity. Um, yes, as we as we now know, Spark is no longer a thing. Sparklet is what it's going to be. Um, they did say in the meeting that was done to basically just avoid confusion. Like if yeah. we're going to be on onboarding a whole bunch of new players, it's just an extra step of confusion that, you know, you got to have this one, this token on the exchange, but then you got to convert it within yeah. the app. Well, it's just, of course, it's just much easier if it's all the same. So, Absolutely. yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, now, I'm not the biggest brain, and some of the maths on this went over my head, but yeah, added launch campaigns pool. They did go over this extensively with us. So, basically, there's a new allocation of 2% of the token supply will be used to promote the launch of Sparklet. Um, yeah, this is to provide the liquidity on the, it's interesting, they say centralised exchanges here rather than decentralised and okay. it's not singular. So it does sound like they're working with more than one exchange, which is cool. And, well, I... I guess I ask you from the get-go, how much of a crypto background do you have prior to uh, getting involved in Uplink? Very little. Yeah. 
Okay. So has all of this stuff that's Upland doing, has that inspired you to then go and do some crypto stuff to get ready? Um, well, I opened the uh, MetaMask yep. account, but that, that's about it. And I got a VAX address yeah. as well, because some of the activities, yep. um, they will give you badges or, or NFTs that you can put on your VAX. So everybody got it, so I've got one now. <laughs> Yes, that's good. Well, that's good. That's dipping your toe in there. So you Absolutely. you at least have some experience with it. So that's very cool. Uh, development and growth allocation reduction. The development and growth. Previously, the upland treasury allocation has been reduced from 40% to 31%. Yep. Okay. Now, this is this was probably the biggest thing that we kind of, that us broadcasters ask questions about. Um so it says here, the existing owners, meaning the Upland players, allocation has been increased to 14%. Uh, so, yeah, what did they say? The Originally, like at present, players hold about 7.55%, well, I think they said, and they're moving to 14%, which okay. is almost, oh, it says it there, doesn't it? Which is almost a doubling. Now... The rest will be airdropped to the existing token owners according to different criteria, including token purchases and engaged Upland players. What's, um, what does that mean to you? So I assume that they will be airdropping Sparkler to those who already got some. So, yep. But what about those who does not have any, but they still share? Like the you know, the account that got the 41 Spark in, in a airdrop one, yep. he didn't have any Spark, he just opened an account. So how would he get his share then? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's basically, and the reason, the reasons behind this, which was in, in the meeting, this was the thing that was the most interesting to me is, it's i think it's very good like we we've been speculating for ages like obviously we're not allowed to talk about uh specifics of pricing speculation of what the sparklet token is going to release at but everybody's assuming based on pretty much every other cryptocurrency that goes live that there's there's going to be some kind of uh, at least temporary fall in the price or something like that now yeah. up upland has kind of proactively and preemptively um, put measures in place. So people such as myself, I've bought a, a crap load of Spark. Um, other people have bought Spark as well. Now, if you bought if you bought 10 Spark at $460 each and then this all goes live on the exchange and the equivalent Sparklet price, you know, goes to half, you're probably not going to be that happy unless you're willing to buy more. So what this essentially is doing is putting more Spark into the hands of people who have already purchased Spark mm -hmm. as a kind of a buff buffer for that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is what um, the said on the on the last meetup as well. He is expecting that the price will fluctuate. He thinks that it will go down and then consequently it will go up. Yeah. And what they did, they didn't give any Spark to big investors. So yep. only people who are owning Spark is who is engaged in a community and who is getting it from doing activities or actually buying it. So that's why they think it will be okay. But also depends from the utility that, that the Upland and the devs will be providing. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, one of the yeah, one of the things that we ask questions about is, but what does that actually mean? So, if if you have purchased Spark in the past, yeah, you will be eligible for this. Uh, we don't know the rate, but you can. I predict it's going to be a fairly big chunk, um, you know, of Spark that's going to be airdropped to you. And questions was asked. Well, what about people who haven't purchased Spark, but they've got it through, you know, some of the missions, rewards, treasure hunting. Apparently, that's all going to be included as well. There's one caveat. One caveat is you have to be engaged and you have to actively collect it. So if you're somebody who purchased Spark a year ago and mm -hmm. you're kind of walked away from Upland, 
you're going to have a window of opportunity to claim this. And if you don't claim it, you're not going to get it. And it's going to go back in the pool to be distributed to everybody else who does claim it. Lovely. Yeah, it does make sense. Yeah. yeah I, I like that aspect. It's kind of rewarding people who are actively engaged. Um, I mean, I guess they'll undoubtedly there'll be people who get upset because they're you know they're not actively engaged and they purchased spark a year or more ago you know that's i mean i i get that side of things too but i i like the rewarding the active people that's kind of important yeah but this is what apple always said we will be rewarding active people so they're just doing what they yep. already said yeah now what else did i write my notes are horrendous here but i said separate allocation for purchased versus awarded um ah oh, that's that's what it is so yeah it's not going to be as straightforward as you know you you bought and you won this many spark or even like the daily login and stuff so you get x amount of airdropped apparently there's going to be a different algorithm that allocates based on if you purchase spark or if you earn it through treasure hunting or something like that so obviously they're going to they're going to airdrop more to people who actually purchase the spark as opposed to those who earned it which kind of makes sense um yeah so basically by doing so they're devaluing the sparklet price by half but doubling the supply um that's a very meta look at it but yeah mm -hmm. I, I i came away from the meeting thinking okay this is this is a positive thing because they're, they're at least thinking ahead and planning ahead to kind of combat or address w what will be market instability at least in the short term yeah absolutely i do appreciate what they what they're trying to put in place yeah so that's and if nothing else i got free spark <laughs> yeah exactly so yeah i mean that that's a really good point like if you're somebody who's actually engaged in upland and you're building or you're you know you're manufacturing any more sparklet that you can get is going to be good uh, oh that's another thing too um because of the supply going to be changing you know they're putting more sparklet in the hands of players mm -hmm. this will then change all, basically, all of the manufacturing spark hours, the construction spark hours, will have to be rebalanced in the future at some stage. Mm, okay. Yeah. So that was that one. Now, the, there is um, there's notes in there to go and check the the white paper. I I had a very quick look through this. Um, it does seem like there's a whole bunch of stuff there that needs to be updated. Uh, so I'm not going to touch on that. In too much details the link to this will be in the description if people want to check it out um fellow ucm broadcaster upland guide he did put some notes together which probably a lot more clearer than the ramblings that i've just done so he's got some stuff there as well so there's a link to this one in the description um it's not too lengthy he's just got a few a few bullet points there so check that out as well and i'm sure um some of the other broadcasters will put out more videos about it as well so all in all, I'm pretty positive about all of that. Um, how about yourself? Just as a general overview of how we're going with the crypto side of things. Um, just going with the flow. So, you know, even if I would complain, then that doesn't change anything. <laughs> so we're just yes, going with so the flow. So I'm, yeah. I'm touching on stuff that I can do and I'm just accepting the stuff that I cannot change. You know, we can put in the, well, we've been pushing for collection status in the coral wood. You know, we hit the glass ceiling, everybody's glass ceiling is somewhere else. There's nothing we can do about yep. it, even though we done everything humanly possible. We had Excel spreadsheets, covered with Excel spreadsheets <laughs> to maximize the yeah. effect. And it was uh, like a cross node cooperation and we just couldn't get through the glass ceiling, you know, and I can be upset about it or we can just refocus and do something else. And this is what we did. Yeah. We started to focus yeah. on map assets and uh, we also raised a um, suggestion, but they probably had a lot of suggestions. So, But they read it yes. and uh, they marked as read. So. <laughs> nice. Yeah. 
And you had, of course, you've got Rock Drigo in the team who is Absolutely. one of the best people at, you know, analysing yeah. all the data. So, yeah, um, it, we faced the same thing in Midtown Terrace. Like it was probably more than a year ago where I did a kind of mini campaign to actively push yeah. to try and boost our score. Um, got a whole bunch of people on as residents. Uh, you know, we made a, we did as much as we could and it barely moved the needle. So after that, Absolutely. I just said, look, we're, we're just going to just ignore it. And when it happens, it happens. And it finally ticked over. So, yeah. yeah. All right. I'm sure we'll get all <laughs> Naturally, that? just leave it, don't touch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's. I don't, th that's not how it was designed to be. No, it's, it's definitely not supposed not. to be like that. But, you know, it's what you said, go with the flow. There's some things that are out of your control. And and just, just say focus, do something else, you know. Yeah. Yes. Or get frustrated and yeah. chuck a big and tantrum and get banned. Go just... <laughs> get some enemies. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, boy. All right. Well, speaking of Midtown Terrace, I hope you don't mind. I'm just going to do a little bit of self-promotion because we do have a campaign going on at the moment. If you didn't see on the Upland Down Under podcast, Midtown Terrace is currently undergoing a three-stage sales survey. We are in the final stage of that at the moment. So there's a link to a Google form in the description. If you go on over to that, you can have your vote, have your say on what the price is going to be for, I'm, I'm going to be selling or at least putting up for sale about a bit over 120 properties in Midtown Terrace. Um, and there's four categories here. There will be a small townhouse property um, in UPX, small townhouse property in USD, townhouses as available as three three collection sets in UPX. Uh, keep in mind these prices are per property and also in USD. Now, if you missed out on stage one and stage two, basically I did, I did it this way because, you know, I didn't want to be accused of trying to cash out, trying to cash in, yada, yada, yada. So I haven't I haven't come up with these figures at all. It's been the community at large. Um, I will say I was surprised at how high the numbers were. I was okay. expecting much lower price. I would be, personally, I would have been willing to sell these at a much lower price. But then again, I, if I look at some of the small townhouse property lots, the mint value on the properties themselves is around 12,000 UPX, mm -hmm. but I built out all of Midtown Terrace back when the spark rates were like crazy high. So yeah. it probably cost me more than this to build them. So that is what it is. So, yes, come over here, have a vote, click on which one you want to do. Make sure you put your Upland in-game name in there. And if you do so, you will go in the running for a whole bunch of prizes that I'm going to give out on next week's Upland Down Under podcast. So the prizes for that are a set of five mystery map assets, There'll be 5,000 UPX, 10,000, 50,000, 100,000, and then there'll be three chances at winning one of the properties, the townhouse properties as well. So, yeah, pretty good prizes there on offer for a few moments of your time. All right, that's enough self-promotion for me. Um, maybe did you have any questions about how or why or what I'm doing over there? Yeah, you are in this phase of your journey, upland journey. So I, it does make absolutely, it does make sense. So I'm not yeah, judging it's... anything. Yeah, this is what you are doing. And if I can get one, I will, you know. Yeah, well, a, a lot of people have, a lot of people have reached out in the past saying I'd love to get a property there. Um, previously, I've been really reluctant to sell anything because I wasn't really sure we were going to do there. Um, Midtown Terrace has kind of matured to the point now and kind of a few different things on the back end have settled down where now I want to start being a bit more involved. Like we last, last month I started up a campaign where every month I'm going to do some giveaways for anybody who's got their residence in Midtown Terrace. That's going to be a monthly thing. So, um, 
if you just go off the market floors, if people wanted to buy Indomie Dow Terrace, I, in the past, we've purposely inflated the market floors, buying up all the low hanging fruit. Yep. So it's, it's not really, it doesn't really make sense to go over there and buy a property for 200 US dollars. That's mm -hmm. just crazy. So this is a way that I can kind of get properties in the hands of people who want them. Obviously, there's, if you don't want one, you don't have to buy it. Um, yeah. It, one, one, one of the other things I wasn't sure what to do with um, how to go about selling them because, you know, all of the properties are different sizes, yet the price is going to be the same. So I think what I'm going to do is we talked about on the Upland Down other podcast, I think I'm going to put a list, kind of like a menu list of all the properties that are for sale, all the ones that are the small townhouse that are just a one of the three collections. And I'll probably post that in the MBA server, something like that. And It'll be first in, best dressed. If you want to go and get a full collection set, we'll go and tell me the ones you want and I'll just mark them off. Um, it's pretty hard to do. Anyhow, that's enough about me and what I've got going on. Um, I'm sure everybody's far more interested in you and what you've got going on. So, BK, maybe you can tell us a bit more about yourself. Now, I believe you're London-based, but you don't sound like you have a... A London or a British accent, so there must be more to the story um, there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm uh, I'm not British. I'm uh, Eastern European, but I live in the UK for over ten years. Um, yeah, I met my husband online, <laughs> and I moved to the UK. <laughs> I could um, yeah. love it. Yep. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's really good because his parents live very close to my parents, you know, but we met online. <laughs> Oh well. Wow. So well, it's very convenient when you have uh, childcare issues. You know, just export the children for the summer, and they can sort it out. You know, the grandparents. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, and when I was already <clears throat> in the UK, I came across uh, Upland. Uh, it was a Facebook advert, and I was like, "Ooh, mm -hmm. properties on the blockchain!" And it was at that time it was like new and still new and hot, and not many people are involved and um and i signed up uh, and my game was obviously buy as low as possible um low markup uh, focus on the yield um so that was my gameplay so i invested a little bit obviously the first investments were like oakland <laughs> not very good nice. choices i started in uh, la yep uh, so i minted quite uh, a few properties in la I, I don't really know what I was doing, but uh, I went for it. And that was the first city that was like, a whole city was released and it was like a bunch of properties. So it, 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 it's, still, it's still not minted out, probably never will be. Mm. Because they keep finding all these neighborhoods they can release, you know? <laughs> it's oh, like, come on. Yes, <laughs> yes I, got, um, I got burnt in Chicago with that, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, and then... Uh, they released the factories. So I was like, okay, so I'm focusing on the yield, but it's boring. So let's do something else. They released the factory. Obviously, I wanted a factory, but I only had like 0 0.84 spark. I started a factory mm. and it took me like one and a half years to build one. And I was like, that's okay. I will wait. <laughs> I will yeah, wait yeah. it out. I was not hunting, you know, because I didn't know how to do it. Mm. Um, and then I was like, okay, so this is going to take me one and a half years. I probably don't want to wait that long. Uh, and at that time, there was a Discord server, Upland Data, and that one yep. uh, showed you the details about players who had unstaked Spark. Mm. So I asked myself a question, what could go wrong? So I just took a list of people um, and contacted every single person who got more than one Spark unstaked on like top 200 mm. lists. So I contacted approximately 100 people. And the, the, the response was so positive, I can't believe it. it my, my factory was uh, fully staked within an hour for free. Yep. <laughs> you know, because That's I was teaching, teaching a story of, uh, you know, hi, I was stupid enough to start the factory. Would you be, you know, kind enough to help me? And some people stayed at Spark, and there was one player, I, got, I don't know what's his name uh, anymore, but he told me why I'm not hunting. And I was like, I tried in, in LA, but it's just impossible for me to hunt and he told just go to Rutherford and I was like oh okay let's try it it took me a while because I'm not very skilled but uh yeah that was a game changer 
was absolutely a game changer. Mm. Uh, hunting in Rate 4, and uh, each and every new person I came across go hunt to Rate 4, go hunt to Rate 4, and uh, 99% will say yes. I had one new person who said, No, I want to hunt in LA, and he's hunting there uh, with like mm. five properties, and he's still successful. And I like, Yeah, so it's, it's not everything is for everybody, everybody got their own choices, journeys. I'm just going with whatever worked for me, try this. Um, and then also in this time, uh, one of the messages I sent is one of the Quawood managers uh, told James, and he was like, how did you find me? <laughs> it's like, what did I find? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Told James why, is great. I've, why are you contacting me? <laughs> yeah, that's and good. The message. <laughs> and basically he was like, yeah, well, talk to Rodrigo and he will help you. And since then, um, mm. it's uh, more than a year and we just didn't stop talking with Rodrigo, you know. We have so many uh, cool projects together. And he um, basically showed me, he's, he's got like a document with all the reasons why uh, which city, which, in which city to build a network. So he's building a network in Queens and then I've done, done my research and then I decided to build one in Queens. And, but since then, uh, Washington came out. Uh, and it's much, yep. it's like 62,000 properties will be when it's uh, fully released. Uh, so I started to build there and I'm selling my Queens network. Um, mm. and also, yes, I finished the factory. Um, then I bought four more factories, um, because also when we, um, so I met Rodrigo approximately in May last year. And then in October, I was like, why are we not pushing for collection? And he was like, yeah, let's push for collection. And at that time, what we did, we used everything that we had. So we contacted every single landowner. Mm. And told them we are doing this. This is increasing value of your property. We are letting you know that you've got something that got higher value than the mint. So I was providing them with a value. I was providing them with the information. Uh, so there wasn't a problem. Everybody was uh, appreciative. Uh, those who we couldn't yeah. contact, we send them offers. And we recovered a lot of properties for like 50,000 UPX. Now, you know, there are two properties to sell in Kuala for hundred bucks. Mm. Um, yeah, and, th and this time we came across two important people. One of them was Pils, uh, who is our designer. He's our community designer. And we've got a deal with him um, that whatever we produce, we give him half of the production so he doesn't pay UPX or USD for our assets. We are yep. giving him half of the production. Uh, and the other person, important person is John uh, Sawyer uh, from Next World. And he was lucky enough to have one property in Quawood. And uh, he was like, uh, so who are you? Why are you messaging me? Tell me more. And I was starting to telling him. And it turned out that he's got a company with 40 people who are creating games for Sandbox. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I just pulled up Quawood here now for us to have a look at. It's looking absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, this is on my son's old laptop, so I'm cautious of how I scroll around here, but yeah, yeah. no, look, it's, it's one of the, one of the oldest node projects out there. You mentioned Tall yes. James. I interviewed Tall James three years ago, believe it or not, as part of one of the old podcast series I did. So yeah, uh, the team there has been around for a very long time, um, doing amazing things i mean have a look at the progress on this it's great to see the diversity of the properties and that sort of stuff as well yeah it looks in, looks incredible yeah only so, yeah, thing well that done we, to everybody uh, but sent, yeah i'm a bit scared yeah we sent offer to everybody who was uncontactable so whatever is there and it's and it's clear is there is no way of contacting them as we tried sending offers we tried um you know in game yeah. we tried uh you know, sending now when they've got a new in-game chat, you can send them messages even though they've got a messaging, you know, you can like, you can comment or they post. So if they log in, they are starting to be followed by the yep. Lama and then, you know, you can reach out to them by just replying to the post about the Lama starting to following them. So we've done everything. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I did similar back in the Midtown Terrace days, but yeah, there's, there's just some accounts there that they're Unfortunately, they're just uh, dead accounts. Yeah, um, yeah it, it's a bit of a shame, but 
for the older the older node projects it's just there's no getting around that it just is what it is so yeah all right now i will say you said you did some treasure hunting um i had a look before you've got uh currently 8.72 spark yeah. um was all of that pretty much all of that earned through treasure hunting and rewards yes. or have you purchased yes, some as well hunting. no I haven't purchased anything. Yeah. No speak. All right. And it does so on apexland.me, it shows that you only have 2.72 staked. So I'm assuming you've got six sparks staked in one of your factories. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I've got uh, three factories going, producing my passages. All right. Well, I might just go back a little bit. Like you said, you you found Upland uh, via the Facebook ad, um, and you you said a couple of things there. Blockchain, the word blockchain stuck out to you, but you said you don't necessarily come from a crypto background. Yeah. But there was the property aspect that you liked. Um, I kind of asked people this because I I kind of reflect on this myself. What is it about Upland that hooked me in so deeply? Um, I'm still not 100 percent sure myself. Was it was it the visuals of Miles the Llama, or do you have memories of playing Monopoly or something like that? Um, I like the idea of uh, properties uh, because I'm uh, from a not very privileged background, and uh, I always found that the property is the best way to invest because I can get a mortgage, you know. And when I started working, I take out a mortgage, but later. I was earning more, so I was able to take out another mortgage. And then I came to a different country when I was able to get another mortgage. So I've got three properties now, you know. So property is something oh, that gosh. you can, but I'm renting them out, you know. So I'm renting yeah. them out. And I know that I don't have any benefit now, but for the future, I know that uh, there will be benefit because mm -hmm. I will have two properties that I can use for my retirement or sell them or whatever. And their prices are going up. So even though, yes. um, you know, the, the percentage that you are paying is going up and down, but at the end of the day, the people who are living there are paying my mortgage. So mm. that's what I found. And when I found, oh, okay, it is on a blockchain. So it's, uh, um, you know, properties you can actually own. I heard about Sandbox. I heard about, um, what's the other, other one? Decentraland, Decentraland probably. Is the yeah, other but they are very expensive. I've been in there in, in those 3D environments, but just I don't know what I'm doing. It's it's expensive. I don't really want to get involved. But with Upland, you can have one property for free because you had the sign up bonus, you know, and they were quite yep. cheap. So and that was like okay, so if it is so cheap, I can I can give it a go. So it was affordable. Mm -hmm. It was affordable. Yep. It was around properties. So I assumed that. Um, um, yeah, and actually, I did enjoy it, but I, I wasn't involved in a community. I did. I like yeah. the aspect of you know, uh, you know, uh, having the yield and then being able to purchase another one. Um, but I wasn't engaged in a community. I wasn't um, at all in any. Not really talking to anyone. So I was just yeah. going solo, just focus on yield, until I needed help. <laughs> Yeah, well, that that's good. You kind of mentioned that you, again, you were proactive in searching out players and beginning those conversations about Spark. Yeah, exactly. um, yeah is and then of course you got involved in Quailwood, and the rest is history. Yeah. Shall we say now? You said you kind of your first real big involvement was in LA as a new player that came into the game. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody goes, oh yeah. no, why did I do that? Um, do you have any examples of? you know, face slapping moments? Uh, well, when I was going through my holdings at one point and I was like, well, let's just come through. What do I have? And at the big end, uh, I started from the older holdings and I was like, why would I even consider buying this? <laughs> what yes. what, what the idea? <laughs> yeah. So ha have you been actively involved in all of the city releases since you've, yes, since you started? Yeah. yeah, except except and, Clinton and Stockton, I didn't went there, mm, okay. and slow, slow, and, I didn't went there either. Okay, now, are you somebody who goes into these city releases with a plan, like you have a notebook yep. and you have targeted mm -hmm. properties? Yep. So you're yeah, good at avoiding FOMO. Yeah, I'm I'm avoiding FOMO as much as possible uh, because I've got yep. a budget. So I'm targeting yep. properties around the water, close to the uh, train station, 
and then flip because I've got now a hunting network. I don't need properties for that. I now got yep. lands for my showrooms. I don't need any lands for that. I'm selling my Queens network. So now my amount of my properties is going down. Um, I'm basically refocusing. I'm not focusing on yield anymore on the properties. I'm more focusing on the on the assets. Um, I've got several cars. I don't know why. <laughs> it's not probably day, one useful <laughs> at one point. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good. Well, I, I did have a look at your, I'll bring that up because it's, yeah, um, <clears throat> your, your progress graph is, it's quite interesting. As soon as I saw your progress graph, I was like, wow, look at this. Now this is, this is very interesting. It's not like a lot of the ones that we look at on the Upland Down Under podcast. It's very linear growth. Um, when I see a graph like this, I'm like, wow, okay, this is, there's some stories here. Now, what sticks out to me is very interesting is that your number of properties is fairly stable. Yeah. You've dropped off here a little bit. Um, when's that? End of last year, you dropped off a little bit, but you've picked it back up and now you are, as you said, kind of rebalancing as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. But that's kind of, that's fairly consistent, but you're, you're bloody properties net worth and your meat net worth they're all over the place what's going on there uh because i'm uh, collection swapping ah yes that, that that would do oh because you have to hold those now for such a long exactly. time don't you exactly and mm. at the beginning in may when i started i was doing blue ones and purple ones but after a time yep. when i got um and the thing is i don't have any of my own I don't have any properties and I still can find people who are willing to swap with me. So this is about creating those connections, creating, you know, uh, yeah. basically building a reputation. And yes. having a reputation is more valuable than Spark or UPX. Having a yes, good reputation, absolutely. having good network of people is more valuable than Spark or UPX. And this is yeah. what I'm doing. So then I got... Um, you know, they got confidence in me that, yes, I will be returning stuff. I'm, I'm tracking my stuff. I'm noticing them that I need to return the stuff. So they give me all the ultra rare corrections and the rare corrections, you know. And um, yep. And it is pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, that that's great. And especially, like, you being so tied up with such an established uh, node project like Quail Wood would definitely yeah. help with that sort of stuff as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, so your mint net worth graph, at one point it's over your property's net worth, which is nice to see, and then it drops down and back. And, yeah, no, that's very interesting there. Um, are, are you somebody who's taking advantage or making use of the opportunities now with so many properties being available in both USD and UPX now under mint? um not really i'm uh, focusing on properties that i need yeah okay uh, basically if i buy a property i will develop it i will put a property yep. on it i will put nodes on it i would put a uh, spark uh, cave uh, factories on it you know I, I will develop those lands so i'm holding lands that i actually want yep yeah no that's good and yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to speculate. You know, I'm building for the future. I'm building a stable uh, account that can do stuff. You know, I'm building for yes. the future. I'm not. I'm not uh, <clears throat> um, just buying so I can flip it later because you don't know if the value will go up. It will go down. You don't know. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, one other question. Now, this is. I haven't prepared you at all for this one, so bear with me. Um, Can't wait. We did, <laughs> we did focus on your account as part of the Upland Down Under podcast with the Dynamic Node Builders. I think that was in the start of this year. It might have been January this year. Um, yeah. We looked at yours. Now, this is the first opportunity. I always say when I read some of these, oh, there's got to be a story there. I want to hear that. Um, this one down here, one, one of the questions you were asked, one thing you will never do again, and your answer was swim in the ocean. There's got to mm -hmm. be a story there. What's that about? Um, when I was uh, younger, uh, with my friends, we used to go um, to Greece, and uh, mm -hmm. we used to go 
take uh, like a little, little boat, an inflatable boat, and you know, just go out around the coast and find little beaches when no one is going because it's inaccessible. You cannot climb there. You cannot go there. Mm -hmm. You are not going to take a proper boat to get there. So you just take a little. Uh, but it was too many of us. So two of us had to be in the water. Uh, and we only had one flippers. So I ended up having no flippers and not being on a boat. And they basically a little bit, you know, forgot about me. <laughs> At the time, were too, uh, too um, strong. So I was going against the, the rock wall that was quite steep. So there was nowhere to yep. um, hold on. And when I looked into the water, I was in a jellyfish field. Oh, yes. So, yeah, I was a pretty scared and, and I was trying to shout, but they couldn't hear me because it was the wind and they were too far. So never again. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that brings back some memories for me as well. I, I grew up basically as a kid on the in the ocean, swimming, fishing, snorkeling and that sort of stuff. I remember not similar, but not dissimilar. Um, I was fishing with my dad out in a boat and one of his friends and i just got a new um hand spear and i wanted to get in and have a look around and test it out mm -hmm. and he's like right so we got to this one point and i jumped off the boat and jumped into the water and dad reckons i jumped straight out of the water and back in the boat it was kind of like what you when i jumped into the water all i could see around me was just jellyfish everywhere yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. i've done that before too snorkeling i've jumped in the water and like right in front of me was a shark going past so yeah, yeah. Lovely. the ocean is a scary place full of creatures that want to sting bite hurt you so yes <laughs> F fully appreciate that one yeah just just grown up of that kind of adventure <laughs> yes absolutely now one of the other questions in there was um you on the bucket list and this is back in january was to go to genesis week been to vegas no I have seen several photos of you with Dirk. Is that did you go to Genesis Week this no. year, or was that the London no. meetups? Um, I've been to the both London meetups, and I went yeah. to the Paris one. And uh, Dirk didn't went to Amsterdam, but I was there as well. It was organized by Upexland and uh, Dejac. Mm -hmm. All right. Can you speak about those journeys, like Absolutely. some of the fun you had there? Is there any stories? Absolutely. So. Um, it, you know, um, Upland is a very specific thing to do. I don't really yep. have friends, and no, especially old friends who would be interested in Upland. <laughs> so when I, I went, to, I can uh, went to London, and I was really nervous. Uh, you know, you see all these people you don't know, you never met them, and you are going to talk to them about a topic you cannot talk to anyone. <laughs> Yes. So I was very nervous, but I met um, Minaj, um, and uh, yeah, I met him since then on, on the other meetup as well. And I went to London for a training from work, and I meet him again. You know, I, I find a friend who I can talk to, and we call each other sometimes when there is a news. We just call each other, and we're excited. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So yes, I met a couple of people. Uh, now on the last meetup as well, I was more organized. I had a T-shirt printed out with the, with the Qualwood logo and my yes. um, my one oh, picture cool, yeah. in my back. <laughs> nice. And nice. I know what I want to talk about uh, to them, and I was more confident uh, as well. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, it was really cool. Yeah, I feel uh, sometimes like a freak, you know, being engaged in, in like a project and being really into it and spending hours every day. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't feel as much freak on a meetup. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's absolutely true. Like, um, if even, I guess it's changed recently. Now that, well, probably in the last six months where I've, I've taken, I've been fortunate enough to take out a fairly significant chunk of USD converted to Australian yeah. dollars out of Upland. And so my friends have seen, you know, they've been here or they've seen me on Facebook or Twitter or somewhere sharing photos of mm -hmm. what I'm doing with uh, some of the construction projects we're doing around the home. Yep. And then when I tell them, well, yeah, this is that, this has all been paid for by that game I've been telling you about for the last bloody yeah. five years. Yeah. They've, they've, they've kind of gone, wow, but still not super interested to find out any more details. They're like, oh, wow, Absolutely. that's cool. Um, 
So yeah, I can f- totally relate to that. Um, what what about your husband? Um, is he interested in um, it at all? He's got an Upland account, but he's playing poker with the Shiba Master. Yeah. Okay, so, so he's I, more focused um, in that. Yeah, side. so he is. Uh, you know, I remind him to do his daily check-ins. <laughs> Yes. Free spark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, but he's more engaged. He's more on Discord, and uh, and then he's he's asking me what is ing. <laughs> so <laughs> cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's relatable too. Yeah, it's it's funny, isn't it? It's again, it goes back to that point I raised earlier when we began talking. There's there's something about Upland that hooks people in like myself, yeah. yourself, and then there's other people that, for whatever reason, they just don't get that bug. There's not yeah. that crossover factor. I just, I still don't know what it is or why it's, yeah, me neither. it's a mystery yet to be, yet to be resolved here. Yeah. yeah. Even, even at work, if we've got, um, yeah, appraisals, you know, year and what do you do in your free time? Yeah. Well, I hang out in the metaverse. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you do there? Yeah, I'm, I'm manufacturing, I've got cars, you know, and they just look at yeah, me like, yeah. where did it came yeah, from? Yeah, you're a freak. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it, it is interesting because, like, I started playing Upland before before there was any talk of it being associated with the metaverse. When, when, it, when it first came out, it was... That wasn't really an angle they were pursuing. It was all about monopoly on the blockchain. It, it yeah. wasn't until a bit later on that, you know, the the words metaverse, Web3, all of that sort of stuff came into it. Um, so, yeah, when you talk to people about the metaverse, there's, I guess, probably from the media, there's a lot of bizarre opinions yeah. and, you know, especially... The media likes to report on all the crazy stories that are related to the metaverse, all pretty much all of the negative stuff associated with it. Um, you, you said you've dabbled in sandbox and Decentraland and that sort of stuff. Um, are there any other Web3 kind of metaverse projects you do play? Any other Web3 games or anything no. like that? No, I tried hmm. uh, free to play um, thingies you know, when you're farming and stuff like that on wax, but you still have to put money in to yeah. have the space, the RAM space in order to do it. And when I joined those projects, they are already being in the stage when they're going down or they're already like finished, they're not being... Um, then I tried the Alien Worlds, but my computer wasn't good enough um, to have it run. So I just left that mm. one. Um, yeah, yeah, I tried, but... I just spend so much time. There's so much things to do in Upland, and I don't need Upland to entertain me. You know, I can always find something to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's a classic thing, isn't it? Like, um, pretty much, I would say that the amount of time I spend within the actual Upland app, maybe 15, 20 minutes a day. Yeah. The amount of time I spend doing community-based stuff around Upland is probably two or three hours a day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I made, so. um, I, I, I'm looking for uh, value and I'm looking for things that I can make better because I can't make map assets. I can't make uh, YouTube videos. Uh, I can't make x.com engagement. I can't make um, uh, spinny wheel things, you know, but what I can do, I can organize. Yes. I can organize. So what I did, I made a list um, of, because when you go to the community bit in Upland, you've got always those three, four projects just always posting twice a day, the same thing. Now, this is not Upland. Upland is so much bigger. And I wanted to show how big it is, how much um, the community work is go- going on on so many levels. And I made a list in Excel spreadsheet. And in order to do it, I did reach out to every single person who is on the list and had a conversation with them. Are you happy for me to put you on there? Do you know that the value is um, discoverability? Because not everybody mm. is uh, doing engagement and you just see the ones who are, who can do it, but there's so many others who can't. And when I'm then having conversation with others, oh yes, yeah, so reach out to this person because this person got this problem or reach out to that person because that person had very good idea and you might be able to help him. So I'm like a matchmaker uh, between um, mm because I had all this conversation with all these people, you know, and the list is there, it's free for anybody to use, it's free for anybody to get on there, you know. 
Um, so yeah, I think that is a, that is an added value to the community. Yes. Um, do, do you have that available to give us a look at? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I'm sharing my screen, right? Yep. You just got to uh, switch yeah. over to the right one. So I started. I started with um, with the notes. So I started. You know, I got you. I got Beverly Wood. Even though, even though the ones are not very active, I still got them there. If they're not active, I got the retired section there, and it just getting mm. keeps getting bigger. There's so many things to do. Yep. Um, and then you know, because sometimes you are like, oh, okay, so there is a community in Sun Valley, for example, yeah, yes. here, but I don't know where is the Discord, or and then mm -hmm. you can go to uh, Upland Discord and search for it, but you might not find it because of whatever. And here, all the Discord links are here. Yep. Uh, only one who is not here is the Brazilian community because they don't want to be on it, uh, but yep. there is. Is communities of interest, and there is a Brazilian community that is available. Then oh, I've cool, got all yeah. the racing leagues, um, all the tools, even like emerging tools, like this guy who's making up up wallet, uh, and it is basically showing you the price for which you purchase the property and the current floor in that neighborhood, which I find really useful. Mm, However, it doesn't work one hundred percent just yet because uh, Upland keeps changing. Because Upland keep changing yes. the API. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's a lot of people frustrated with that. So he is struggling. And my last update is that, but there are people who are trying these things, you know. Um, mm. And then you've got designers. So there is there is the donut, but not everybody's in a donut, right? Uh, for example, these uh, custom Upland custom craft. They are making stuff. Manu Mioto is here. She is probably uh, she is one of the she's got one of the best designs. However, she doesn't have. Uh, uh, Discord, she doesn't have any, she doesn't do any engagement or anything. Um, but mm. I have created a space for her. I've, I've got a spatial space and I ask her, do you want me to mm. display your assets? And when I'm talking about my spatial, they will see yours as well. And she was appreciative of that. She doesn't have a time to run it or make it yours, herself. So I gave her a space to yep. do that. And then our community uh, designer is Phils. He is really fast, really efficient. Um, and his designs are really nice. Uh, then we've got uh, other, yeah, th this uh, gentleman here, Antique Master, he just started one. So I'm, I'm trying to keep an eye out for those who are, who are creating new um, Discord servers. Uh, then layer two experiences, uh, those who are providing banking in some extent, because banking is not very uh, allowed just yet. And then betting servers. And then I had to create a new bit for social because there's so oh, many no, of them yep yep yeah. and then then I, I there wasn't any space to put in DTech because he doesn't do uh, map assets for anyone so i couldn't put him into the blender wizard bit so i started a brand bit <laughs> mm. and then oh. then i started to put other people in there so he's not there alone <laughs> nice i've got i've got yeah, you I mean... as well Thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah, I remember when you reached out initially about the when it started off as the the kind of yeah. node node list. Um, th that's something that myself and more than more than just myself, there's been a few people that have attempted to do this in the yeah. past. Um, I probably spent I would hate to think 20, 30 hours maybe trying to collate all yeah. the information and get it there. But it just it just changes so quickly. It's it's yeah. so easy to get lost. So um, yeah. something like what you're doing there, just really appreciate the amount of time and effort that you put in. Not not just to set it up, but to reach out to everybody, have those conversations, and most importantly yeah. of all, to keep keep it updated and keep it fresh. So yeah, a a, a kind of tool like that is just really valuable. I think so. That's awesome. Yeah, I did. I did find your sources. I was using them as well. Uh, I did find a couple mm. of Discord servers where there have been uh, links to places. But even on on the Upland page, most of the links were broken, not working anymore. Not, yep. it, it is changing really fast. But if you, uh, if I will, my plan is to look out for new things coming in, put them on, and mm. then after a year, which will be next year in February, do an audit, go into every single one mm. and see if they're still active. 
you know, that's the yeah. plan. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, it, it is it, a lot of time. It is a lot of time yeah. and effort. And the last the last bit I put in is the 3D experiences. When I was in uh, mm. on the last London meetup, I met a lady and she was like, I'm interested in like displaying my art. And I, how can I do that? Well, when the cafes come. But if you want to check out what is there right now, there wasn't a list, you know, so I put the list together. There's left house, Upland Bureau, the when the new players can go in and have the 3D experiences, uh, Abdullah's um, 3D experience, the track hero. But then there is Mr. Alan C. C. Mr. Alan C. He shared a link to his cafe, which he is building. So it's it, there is no uh, mark on it. It's not active yet, but you can go inside because he already shared the link that he got from Upland and he's building it right now. Cool. And then a lot of players, they got spatial spaces where they are displaying their yes. art, where they are displaying their uh, map assets. Which is really easy to yep. do, and they look different. It doesn't look the same like in uh, like in Upland. So I'm quite uh, quite pleased about this uh, piece of work. Yeah, some of the stuff that Elijah Judah has done in spatial is amazing. Yeah. Uh, Coach he's, Punk as yeah, well. He's, here. And, he's up here. Yeah, yeah. I I checked out the Coach Funk one recently. That was really cool as well. And D Tech, yeah. I know he's put a lot of time and effort into his as well. Yeah. So yeah. Awesome. Now, I, I noticed from those screenshots there that they're taken on a mobile phone. Are you a, a mobile-based Upland player or are you on the computer? Both. Yeah, I'm both. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Something yeah. on the phone for obvious reasons. <laughs> yes. But we yeah. got my Xbox well, which is on the, on the computer. Yes, absolutely. Now, the link to this will be in the description, so make sure you go and check it out. And obviously, if you have a project that is not in any of these, I'm sure reach out to BK and she'll sort you out. Um, or if you have, if you're somebody who has a, a link in there, and uh, like she said, it's things do change. People, I, yeah. I don't know how many servers I've, we've changed servers maybe eight times, D Discord servers, and you know, um, websites you you use new ones or you stop using them so things do change so if you need something updated make sure you reach out as well so that's very cool well that that's not the only stuff you're involved in though there is a very big banner poster behind you um the eclectic collections maybe now's the time to dive into that what's what's all that about um when I was opening my first shop when they opened uh, the availability to to do b shops uh I just had to do a background and it, it, it's just a random background that I have done at that time. But then I realized that I have to keep the branding consistent. So I'm using it for all mm. my shops and basically building a brand um, because that will associate people. Okay, so she's doing this, she's doing this, she's doing this and th that a thing as well. And also because my name is so hard to <laughs> just to say. Yes. Yeah, that's so I'm cool. building um, a brand, basically. So what do you have got what have you got going on with that at moment? You you said you've got factories. Well, what are you producing? Um okay. I've uh, I'm producing map assets mostly done by Phil's. I can absolutely show yep. some of them. Uh, this is the one that I'm waiting for approval. This is changing hut, you know, on the beaches. Yes, yeah. Available in different colors, so I would coming. imagine. This is coming. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There will be different colors as well. Uh, yeah, this is another oh, yeah. one yeah. of those, just it's in a, a different color. Ah, oh, they'll look awesome along the, you know, if you've got South Lake Tahoe properties or something like that, somewhere along Miami on the waterfront. That'd be cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the idea. And my very first one was done by Manu Miyoto and it's this uh, telescope. And, and the work is just amazing. How the, how the light is going off it and everything. I love it. Yes, there are some very talented um, creators out there. Is... Absolutely. Yeah, so these are all the four colors. And mm. then I've got a beach towel. This one is available right now in the in the shops. Nice. 
very good. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's really good. How has and your the street experience? Oh, and this is the best one. Uh, yeah, with the telescope, best one for Phil. Nice. Yeah. How how has your experience been with manufacturing? Like you you said, you're working with a few UGC creators, so you're not. Manif or you're not creating the assets yourself, but then you're going through like no. you have to submit the you have to submit the designs to Upland. You have to get the feedback and that sort of stuff, and then of course you have to go in manufacture these things. And like I've been whining for years and years about the process of moving them from the factory to the showroom and blah blah blah. Um, yeah, is that it's something you enjoy yes. or? <laughs> yeah, well, that sums it up, yeah. Uh, uh, well, I made a list, obviously. Yes. <laughs> and I've got a couple of addresses that I've got, for example, close to a Spark Quest dev shop that I'm decorating because yeah. that is a good... If people want to do withdrawals, they need to go to a dev shop. So I purchased yep. a property next to a dev shop in a city where I know that a lot of people are because they most likely hunting. So I'm decorating that piece of land. Um, then next to my BE shops in Qualwood shops, uh, next to my racetrack, I'm decorating. Um, and then, and then I'm stocking up my, uh, showrooms. So I'm, I'm writing down when, where do I stock up what? So I have to keep track of what is being produced. Where do I have stock? Where is the stock missing for whatever reason? And because yeah. I'm adding, keep adding uh, showrooms as well, then the list is just getting longer and longer. So I need to produce 138 map assets, you know, 139 map assets in order to, um, because I'm giving half to fill and to stock up all of my showrooms that I've got or will be having because these are I still need to build this for. Yeah, it, it's a lot of work. I think um, I think I'm at 35 showrooms now or something crazy like that, and. Yeah, originally I was moving the assets over and setting them all up perfectly, like all of the red Christmas spirals and then the blue ones, and then I've given up on that and I'm just dumping them wherever they land. That'll do. Yeah. Yeah, it can be a frustrating process, um, especially with if you're trying to do it on mobile yeah. with the amount of widescreen crashes, it's kind of really out of control. Yeah. All right, I might just jump out of there because it seems yeah. like my computer's lagging. It doesn't Sorry, I really think like. I'm lost to that. It's may... Yeah. Maybe because I was scrolling. Yeah, it's maybe because yeah. I'm scrolling and I planned. Yeah, that's all right. I just jumped us out of there. I can see that. Yeah, it's as I said, I'm on my son's laptop too, which doesn't like. It's not exactly the most powerful of little lappies, so. Yes. All right. So what else have you got going on? You're manufacturing, you're involved in Quailwood, you're working on your account. Um, what else is capturing your attention at the moment? We haven't spoken about, well, there's a lot to dive in there. Um, the layer twos within Upland, you mentioned you're doing a few things with racing. Um, there's season passes, Paris, totems, a lot to dive in there. Absolutely, yeah. So totems, I was uh, heavily involved because I see value in it. Uh, I saw it as uh, like Spark was Spud, and then it was Spark, and now it's Sparklet. So now i am got the opportunity to be at the beginning of the live token. So I did purchase a lot of totems. <laughs> and so you're in eagerly comparison with the size of my account. Yeah, so you're eagerly anticipating um, the second second one. Anticipating, yes. Yes. Right. Now, did you purchase those on the secondary markets? Have you been involved in the yeah. you know um, the evolution pot potions upgrading? No, I wasn't doing the potions upgrade because it was uh, betting. You know, you may or may not get a better totem. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, and how did you go with, with Totems? How did you go balancing in that first uh, series 
all of the different feeding schedules and all of that was that something that you enjoyed had fun with uh yes as soon as there was a schedule in place which was quite soon because the um deja she was organizing as excel spreadsheet where people were putting stuff in and then uh, their their experiences what kind of messages they got and within within a couple of days we already figured out how to feed the totems and then um Blowman, Blowman, he's got a um, website, yeah. uh, my upland, yeah, my info, and he's got all the feeding schedules up there that came from the community. So it was very, very helpful. That was a, that was a game changer. So, so I was uh, on it all the time. I had alarm clocks on and I was feeding, you know, at night, alarm clock going off because I need to feed the totems. <laughs> <laughs> What did you, what did your husband think about that? He didn't know because um, my children are quite needy, so I'm sleeping next to them. Yep. Okay. So you could just sneak off and get it done. That's cool. So just looking yeah, exactly. at your yeah. totem, just looking at your totems now. Yeah, big pile there, and I see this is your raceway as well, Twin Lakes Races. Yes, yeah. I was I was lucky enough to uh, be sponsored last season by the Ninjas, and this season mm -hmm. I'm sponsored again by Qualwood and Next World. Very cool. So I'll get out of there before my laptop crashes too. Um, so yeah, as far as the upland racing, is that something? Well, clearly you must enjoy it. If you're being sponsored, you must be heavily involved. Uh, to be honest, I'm good at organizing. I'm not good at racing. Um, I just started the racetrack building because there wasn't much to do at that time. And it was something I was able to do. Uh, so I started it. I was lucky enough to saw a post of one player who was saying, um, I got 30 spark. I will stake it for whoever messaged me first. And I did <laughs> I was first to message him, so he helped me a lot. Um, Danny P two thousand. Yes, um, Danny P. Yeah, so he helped yeah, me a lot with it. Me. And then when I finished it, <laughs> <laughs> when I finished it, um, I had to get races on it, but it wasn't easy. And I went to URL because that was the only racing league I knew at that time. And they said, "Well, you need to have thirty percent group ownership and uh, eleven percent build, or something like that." So I went and I messaged each and every person on the track and I told them, if you start the building, I will give you a map asset. And whoever replied to me, I considered them as part of the group. <laughs> nice. Good. I purchased yeah. a lot of land around it as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I've, I've got the list for them as well, but I don't bring up the list, otherwise it can crash your computer. <laughs> But I got a list yes. of all the people, what messages I sent out. Did I send them an offer? Uh, did they build something? If they built something, I gave them an incentive. I gave them a map asset. So I already was using my map assets for good, you know. Um, mm. So it was a win-win. You know, they started a building if they want to, and they will get a free map asset for the effort. And, yeah, I've got quite a lot built up. I got 47% build up. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, sorry, thirty three percent build nothing. up and forty seven percent group ownership. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's excellent. And that's yeah. again that that's something so, that yeah, you've, now the race, yeah. You've, <laughs> yeah, it's something that you've seen and I it seems to be a fairly common theme showing up with you that you're very proactive in reaching out to the community and trying to build these relationships and let people yeah. know what's happening. So that that's really cool to hear. Absolutely. But, um, something else that I wanted to touch on, which we haven't yet looked at, I was having a look at your X account before. Um, I really like what you've done here with some of these information cards that you put out. Like uh, you've got one here. This is all about the Sparkade.me profit share. Um, perhaps you could yeah. speak about this process and what the what your purpose is with this okay. it's this is not the only one you've done a bunch of these yeah 
so uh, with Sparkade, um, the project started in October. I was involved since the beginning, but in December I gave up because it was, mm. I couldn't understand it and no in explanations would make sense. And the problem is that uh, Splintock, who is the creator of the project, he is telling a story, you know, but it doesn't help mm. the people who got logical. Okay, so if I do this, I get this and I need to do this mm. in order to get that. It doesn't help. Um, and then in uh, February, I think, someone, uh, I was messaging someone about something else and he, he was telling me about Spark and they ended up talking for five hours, for five hours. Oh, and he wow. was trying to explain it to me, poor guy. And he yeah. did manage, he did manage to explain it to me in a, in a, in a sense that I, I then I, Rodrigo, uh, he, oh, he also helped uh, a lot. But it was a lot of th things are not written down. It's just, you know, from experience, you don't know. But in essence, I boiled it down. Okay, so you basically can do it even free. Mm. And it is giving utility to your land. Um, and I reached out to Splintock. Look, if I do this, would you be upset? And he was like, no, please mm. do. Please, please talk to people. Tell them it is possible to do it even free. What are the benefits of doing sense? What are the benefits of other things, you know, so people don't just get there and get upset they don't know what it is about or just to have the personal service of they go to discord they ask a question no one is answering but if, if there is someone mm. who's telling if, if you want answers please come to me and it's advice is for free just talk to me you know um and he appreciated it and he would like to, to start um, a service of big accounts because in order to develop someone's account who got thousands of pieces of land it's like hours of clicking i mean like if you want to do all the developments on someone's accounts who got two thousand properties it's eight hours of work seven days a week One yes week yeah it's work, eight hours a day uh, it's ridiculous yeah. it's a lot of clicking it's a lot of clicking i done that for my one <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah we are very good friends <laughs> we are very good friends nice. And, uh, so basically, yeah, you, it it seems like you put and that information card together, kind of for yourself almost, but then sharing that with the community as well. Yeah. So I've, I'm managing now thirteen accounts plus mine, mm. and uh, I gave advice to many many other people. So they they just know that they can come to me and ask, okay, so if I do this, what is going to happen? And then I tell them that I've done this, mm. and this what happened. You know, yeah, so, so it's just Im be there it's as like a point of contact. Yeah, so it's important to, to clarify there when you say you're managing 13 accounts, you're not running a multi multi account scam, you're you're actively no. assisting people with no. advice on you know, if exactly. you're helping people yeah. make I can't make, exactly avoid so. making mistakes, yeah, and to exactly. make the most of what they have exactly. and their plans, they and want get to get frustrated. So, then. Yeah. Absolutely, yep. absolutely, yeah. yeah. So I give advice that, to those who want really advice good. and who who wants to have the minds on their accounts, but they don't want to do the clicking. I explain to them what what benefit it does, and they say, "Okay, I don't want to do the clicking. Could you please do it for me?" And I said, "Yes, I'm happy to do it, but if you make UPX, then we share." Yeah. So they know yeah, what they're doing. Enough. It is their account. They just don't do the clicking. I do the clicking for them. Yeah, it's um. There's been instances where I've had people reach out to me, even people that have been playing for a long time and say things like, yeah, I really want to buy this property. Should I buy it? And I'm like, well, wait a minute. Let's have a look on UPX land or somewhere. Um, that It seems yeah. like a good deal, but if you take a little bit of time and dive into it, there's some much better deals out there. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Just this, uh, or someone uh, was messaging me exactly like I did uh, one and a half years ago. He messaged me, could you please help me with your Spark on this property? And then I said, well, I can't give you Spark because I'm paying for Spark myself, but are you hunting? Uh, have you tried Sparkade? Uh, do you have an account with Spark Tycoon? So having the discussion with that guy, and then it turned out that he can do front ends and he would like to help Splintock. You know? Mm. It's it's amazing. Yeah, that that's super helpful. All right. Is is there anything else you would like to showcase that you've got going on? Uh, yeah, the other project I am involved in is the Next World. 
uh, they started to yes. sell these very expensive statues. Yeah, I was just um, looking at I've that. I've done actually, my research. Of cards. Yeah. Yeah, these look very cool. Yeah, so um, they have experiences with providing games for um, so, uh, Sandbox. Uh, mm -hmm. The gentleman, he, he's got one uh, Quellwood property, and this is the one who I called, called back in December. Um, and uh, basically, he would like to bring in some games into Upland, so he's got a dev shop approved, um, and he started manufacturing these uh, map assets. So at the moment, it's me, Rodrigo, and Ace696 who is selling them. However, they haven't yep. released any teaser videos or anything yet. Um, so that's why the, the sales are going slow, but it's understandable. But I done my research, and I think it's uh, it does have a potential. Yeah, absolutely. It seems like they're quietly working away on the but background. I'm putting my reputation and... on it, and that's my, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's true. Like like you said, reputation is everything in this space. So yeah, absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Well, um. Absolutely. How about things like uh, Paris? Are you excited to for the Paris release? What, what's your? Do you have any plans of thinking ahead or what you're going to yeah, do there, is. if anything? Uh, most likely, just mint one or two and uh, flip it. Yes. Yeah, I, I did see. Because uh, I've already got, you know, I, I, I know what the, I know what the plan is. Yeah, that's good. You've got a plan. You're going to stick I to might it. Get um, a, I did mm, see. A totem land. Yeah. All right. There might be a bit of FOMO there then, just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I did see last night in Upland General, there was a few people very disappointed to see that apparently Upland has spelt the Eiffel Tower wrong or something. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw wow. some posts. Yes, yes, very, um, very it's typical, scary. Very but what do you expect? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just a, it's a common team in Upland. <laughs> yes, it's not unusual. It's like you got Adidas, yeah. but it's not Adidas. It's Adidas. <laughs> Adidas, yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, mate. Well, it seems like our computers are not really liking what's going on at the moment, so. If there's anything else you would like to share or have to say, um, now might be the time before we crash and burn. No, that's all right. Thank you. All right. Um, really appreciate no, everything okay, that you. you're doing out there for the community. Uh, as I said, you've, you've been working away at this sort of community support stuff for a very long time. Um, you have contacts with a wide array of people. So, yeah, yeah, if you are newly in the Upland space and you're kind of not sure what to do or you, you know, you're looking for some kind of advice, reach out to BK. Uh, all her links will be in the description as well. And, yeah, go and check out what she's got going on at Eclectic Collections. And, yes, all the best for everything that's coming up. Yeah, thank you, Ben. No worries. So stick around. I'll press end record and we'll do a few different things on the back end. Thank you, mate. And thanks, everybody. We shall catch you later. If you have an Upland NFT or Metaverse product, service or event to promote, or you're just someone engaged in Web3 who'd like to have a chat, send me, Ben68, a DM on Discord or drop a YouTube comment to discuss and secure your spot.